When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Blessings, Dave. Thanks, Gary. Um, Props for you uh, getting your son up there with you. I'm going to call one of my daughters front now, and I'm going to hold them while I (laughs) preach. Not really. I don't want to put them on the spot. So this morning is Father's Day, um, and I do want to um, give a shout out to the fathers, but also uh, want to recognize, too, that there are men here in this congregation and men that we know that are not fathers, for whatever that reason may be. Um, And as was mentioned this morning in Melissa's song and some of the other things we've been talking about this morning is that um, fathers can influence their children. But I'm going to say as men, we can influence children around us. So that is one of my Father's Day uh, shout outs today is that you don't have to be a father to be an influencer. So take that opportunity when you see it and be a blessing to those around you. So that was kind of off the cuff. I didn't uh, have that plan this morning, but I I, uh, felt like I needed to do that. So some of you may be uh, saying, where did you come up with this theme this morning? Some of you may be saying, where did you come up with this theme? This m- All right, we'll do it a third time. Some of you may be saying, where did you come up with this theme this morning? Very good, you're catching on. All right. Um, in the morning, a lot of times when I work out, I will put my earbuds in and set my playlist to um, just random, a shuffle, shuffle version of my playlist. And, and my song, my music preferences lean toward rock and roll. Anything with a big heavy beat, lots of guitars and drums. So one particular morning as I was running and songs were coming on, the song came on that I'm sure many of you are familiar with this group, Kiss. A lot of your favorite songs come from the group Kiss. Um, they, they have a song entitled, don't judge me already, You're, you haven't heard the whole thing. They have a song entitled, Do You Love Me? And it talks about um, having a relationship with a, with a lady and saying, do you love me? And as I was processing that question, do you love me? I was thinking, lots of thoughts were running through my head. I was thinking, what does it look like to love Jesus? And... If Jesus asked me that question, how would I respond? I would say yes, but when I tried doing that as I was running, saying, I love you, Jesus, I didn't feel anything different, and nothing really changed inside me. I didn't get this warm, fuzzy feeling that you should get when you say, I love you. And when that didn't happen, I thought, do I not mean what I just said? So all these thoughts were kind of running through my mind as I was thinking about those four words. For me, the word love has always been a sacred word. I just don't throw the word love out there for anything. Love was more of an emotion or a or a commitment to someone or something. So I was kind of confused about what does love mean? So I, I went to Dr. Noah Webster. Some of you know him as Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia. 
Okay. I went to him for a definition of love, and there's two definitions. One is in the noun form. It means a deep feeling of attraction. Example, babies fill, fill their parents or their grandparents with a feeling of love. And the second is a verb, which means a feeling of romantic attachment to someone or something, such as, I love my wife. Now, I am sure that a lot of us, if we have not said these four words, that we have thought them at some point in our lives as we are in relationship with others. Do you love me? And even at a young age, we know that as children, we love our mom and our dad. We love our dog and our cat and our turtle. And that we like playing with our friends. We like cookies and ice cream. And we like cookies and ice cream together. But where does this crossover happen from between liking and loving? Where is that crossover at? And we can all think of times in our life that we have wondered, do I like something or do I love something? When I was 10 years old, I went to a vacation Bible school at a nearby church. We had just moved to this area, and I didn't have any friends, didn't know anybody here. So as I attended this, this vacation Bible school, there was a pretty girl in that class. She was outgoing, she was funny, she was easy to talk to. Her name was Ruth. Man, Ruth was something. At 10 years old, she was it. So when Vacation Bible School was over, I started to use those things that I learned in Vacation Bible School, prayer, because they were building a new house in my backyard, and I prayed. You want to guess what I prayed for? I prayed that Ruth would move into that new house. Oh, I prayed. That teacher would have been proud of me because I prayed all the time for Ruth to move in. I wanted Ruth to be my neighbor. Well, that day came. The house was sold. People moved in. Guess what? Ruth moved in. <laughs> Except it was a different Ruth <laughs> who I had nothing in common with and hardly spoke to her at all. God does have a sense of humor. So my next step, after seeking counsel from Dr. Noah and Wiki, I turned to the Bible to see what it says about loving God. And it ties in with the song that we sang this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 6 states, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. If love was strictly an emotion, the Bible writers would have turned that verse into love the Lord your God with all of your stomach and with all of your bowels. Because those are the body organs that the Bible writers associated with emotion. When the verse says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, the heart is where we make our choices. The heart is where our loyalty lies. The heart is where our direction takes shape and our attitudes are molded. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, do the will of God from your heart. 
this is where it all starts. This is the center of who I am and where the choices I make come from. In the passage that was read this morning, we are now in the time between Easter, where Jesus has been raised from the dead, and where Jesus is getting ready to ascend into heaven. So what do we know about these two characters in this passage this morning, particularly Peter? Well, we know that Peter has good intentions, but some of the time his mouth got in the way of what he was doing and what Jesus was teaching and preaching to his disciples and others. There are times that as I read these stories of Peter, I could put my name in place of Peter's in these stories. In the book of Matthew, we read that Jesus is out walking on the water, and he calls to Peter to come out and join him walking on the water. So Peter gets out of the boat, and he starts walking. And as he's walking on the water, which is cool, he starts to see the waves and the storm all around him. And he starts to sink because he took his eyes off of Jesus. In the book of Matthew and Luke, we read that Jesus took Peter and two other disciples up onto the mountain where Jesus was meeting with Moses and Elijah. And God called out in an audible voice. And what's Peter do? He says, hey, it's good we're here. Let's build some shelters. And another time, Jesus tells his disciples about how he's going to be arrested, how he's going to be killed. And Peter takes him aside and says, hey, Jesus, don't be such a downer. Jesus turns to him and says, get behind me, Satan. And right before Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus tells Peter to stay awake and pray so he doesn't fall into temptation. What's Peter do? He's out. He's out like a light. We read about Peter boasting that, you know what, you guys are all going to run away when times get tough. But I'm the guy. I am the guy that is going to stand beside you, Jesus. Jesus says, Peter, man, said, you are going to deny even knowing me three times before the sun comes up in the morning. And on Easter Sunday, the women run to the tomb and find that it's empty. Peter goes and sees that Jesus isn't in the tomb. And he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. doesn't get it. How many times don't we get it? I got to collect my thoughts right now because my pages are out of order. So give me a second. Those words that came out Oh, sorry, we're going we're gonna to jump back into the Bible passage. And then we're going to, now that i got my pages, figured out where I'm at. So earlier in this passage of John, in the beginning, we are looking at, we read the, the uh, we were kind of in the middle of the passage, but the beginning of the passage, Jesus and the disciples have a little bit of interaction before that, but the disciples are together and... Peter says, hey, let's go fishing, because that's all we know. There's nothing else. Jesus has been crucified. He's no longer in the tomb. So they are out all night fishing. Don't catch anything. Sun comes up. Still nothing. Dawn's breaking. They see somebody out on the the shoreline over a fire. This guy yells out to them, 
hey, try fishing on the other side. Okay. So they throw the net over on the other side, and they catch this monstrous amount of fish. And at that point, somebody says, hey, it's Jesus. So they all go carrying their net full of fish, their boat. They get to the shore. They have breakfast with Jesus. And then in the passage, it was read this morning. Verse 15 starts, when, when they had finished eating, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? More than these boats? More than this catch of fish? More than this occupation? More than these friends? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, he says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. It seems like those four words that come out of Jesus' mouth, do you love me? They should be coming out of Peter's mouth. Not Jesus. How can you love me? I'm such a screw-up. I don't listen. I fall asleep. Words come out of my mouth without even me thinking about what's going on. I follow you when life is easy, but as soon as the storms come, you're nowhere around. I don't look for you. When they asked me if I was a Jesus follower, I said, no way. Three times. Jesus, do you love me? How can you love me? But Jesus, he doesn't take Peter aside and say, man, you are a screw-up. Why are you one of my disciples? He doesn't say, Remember when you said that? Remember when you did that? Jesus asked Peter, what's in your heart? Who are you loyal to? What is your life direction? Do you love me? Jesus already knows what is in Peter's heart. Peter really did want to follow Jesus' instructions. And Jesus knew Peter needed to say the words, I love you, that you are the center of all that I am. Jesus knows who we are. He has created us. He knows we are imperfect creatures and that we will fail to follow his commandments. Yet he continues to call us into what he created us for. Jesus asked this question, do you love me, to Peter three times as a way to restore him from his three denials of being a Jesus follower. He takes the focus off of our failures and mistakes in the past and directs our attention toward Christ and what he has for each of us. Jesus gives Peter his life's calling to feed the lambs, to feed the sheep, and to care for the sheep. Peter is to care for the people of Israel by teaching them about the Jesus he loves. Shortly after Jesus ascends into heaven, and Peter begins his ministry that Christ called him into. So the message for this Father's Day 
is that no matter what we have done, no matter what we have said or thought, will keep us from the love of God. Romans 8, starting in verse 35, tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not trouble or hardship, famine, demons, nothing in our past, nothing in our future. Our Father in heaven loves us unconditionally. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I'm into or what I'm dealing with. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. When we ask that question of Jesus, do you love me? We know what the answer is. It is yes. Yes, I love you. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. For God so loved the world, the world is each of us, that he gave his only son Jesus to die on the cross in our place for our sins, that we would not perish, but that we would have eternal life. The question each of us has to answer today is the same one Peter had to answer. Do you love me? Do you love me? If your answer is yes this morning, then you need to go and feed and care for the sheep. Model Jesus' love to everyone you meet. Do what you were created for. If your answer is no to that question, or I'm not sure, I would like you to hear the, again the words of John 3.16. For God so loved you, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is waiting for you to say yes to him today. I want each of you to know my Father in heaven on this Father's Day.